Bob's Coffee Chat. It's a weekly Zoom presentation where we uh, talk about how we can not only survive, but thrive in the era of Corona. So I have this weekly uh, Zoom meeting every Friday morning, and we have uh, very uh, entertaining and engaging speakers to talk about lots of things to keep us keep us going in the and uh, especially in the business community so we can uh, chat still network and get to know each other and i'm really embracing this I, we have people here from london i've met some contacts and made some relationships with people from not only all over the country but starting to get some from all over the world so i'm really excited that uh, we we're able to do this and a couple little zoom tips if you want to focus on the speaker go to the upper right hand corner of the video screen where it says view and go speaker view. And then you get a big, a wide screen of who's presenting. And also when we do a screen share that uh, you'll be able to see their slideshow. show. And we talked about it earlier. Uh, if you wanna put your contact information in the chat, feel free. It's a great way for people to get to know you. And if you wanna save the information at the chat at the very end of the meeting, go to the bottom right hand corner of the screen where it says file in the chat box, hit the three little buttons and up at the very top, it'll say save chat. So when you do that at the end, when you're ready to leave, it'll save all that information into the chat, into your computer. So you can contact people later on. So now I am really excited to turn this over to our co-presenters, uh, which are Rowena Finnegan. And Rowena's mission is to provide the next wave of green future and design, one that combines social responsibility and healthy habits with color and texture and, well, fun. Emigrating from Brighton, England, first to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and then to Sausalito, she is certified as a building biology environmental consultant and uses the principles of, hope I say this right, bio, bio biology in her design work. <laughs> Rowena's shop, Pine Street Natural Interiors in Sausalito, highlights her specialty in healthy home design and offers many healthy home furnishing products. And our other presenter today with Rowena is Stacy Lapik. She has been creating, she's been creating award-winning interiors for over 35 years. Stacy uses art, science, and intuition to, as she likes to say, to say, design happiness by synthesizing biophilic principles with amazing design. As their guide and advocate, Stacy helps her clients dare to create something extraordinary. Her work is informed by a Bachelor of Fine Arts, further education in interior design and interior architecture, extensive travel, and the new field of neuroaesthetics, specializing in biophilic, her, biophilic design. Her goal is for each of her clients to feel joy in every time they open their door. So uh, I present to you creating a natural home. It's not about the chair, how human beings thrive in thoughtfully designed spaces that amplify our innate connection to nature. Hi there. Okay, I just realized that if I share my screen, I can't read my notes on the screen. So I just had a little bit of a change here, but here we go. And I apologize for all this because I'm still kind of learning this thing. There we are. Hi. Um, as Bob said, my name is Stacy Lapic, and I'm an interior designer. And with me is Rowena Finnegan. She's an interior designer as well, and also owns a retail shop called Pine Street Interiors in Sausalito, specializing in healthy furnishings. We each have decades of award-winning projects and we are each drawn to the connection between interior design, nature and our health, well-being, and happiness. Our presentation today is called It's Not About the Chair, how human beings thrive in spaces that through thoughtful design amplify our connection to nature. If you have any questions during the presentation, please jot them down in the chat. And at the end, Rowena and I will, will uh, check the chat answer your questions and open it up for discussion. So to begin, I'd like everyone to take a deep breath. Put your feet flat on the floor and if you're comfortable, close your eyes and take another deep breath. Now imagine yourself in a beautiful, happy place, your favorite place. Okay, now open your eyes. How many of you were imagining an outdoor space? 
given that we spend most of our time indoors, we have a real challenge. What can we do to our interiors to create an environment that most connects us to and reminds us of the outdoors that'll help us feel like we do when we're in our happy place? A parallel truth is that without beauty, we can't flourish. And beauty across all cultures is most often connected to nature. It's now been measurably proven that physiologically, psychologically, and spiritually, we're genetically hardwired to live in beauty and to be connected to nature and natural systems. Without beauty in our lives, we become stressed and tired. We lose focus and we're not happy. But in a beautiful environment, we can breathe, right? Interior design goes far beyond space, color, light, and style. Science has found that when people, regardless of culture, background, age, or religion, live in beautiful environments that are intrinsically connected to nature, we're happier and healthier, and we even live longer. My first real job after college was in an advertising agency, and I was super excited when I got my very own office. But what would a space like this make you feel? So I brought in a table lamp and a small natural fiber rug, turned off the fluorescent lights and hung a painting of a landscape on the wall. And I created a space with a bit of nature where I could be clear and focused. And it became a space where people like to hang out. With so many of us working from home and an estimated 80% of us continuing to work from home at least 20 to 30% of the time well past COVID, our home offices can and they should be havens where we could focus and be creative. When we walk into a space and feel a sense of calm, that's beautiful. Beauty is why we're alive. It's not in the eye of the beholder, it's in the brain of the beholder. Dr. Claudia Miller of the University of Texas, head of medicine, says that architects and designers have a greater ability to improve public health than medical professionals. The thing is, we're stressed. We move too fast. We're on our devices constantly. We're trying to fit in one last thing before we run out of time. So we physiologically need a place that allows us to reconnect to the world and to ourselves, which is why I wanna to introduce to you biophilic design. Biophilic design, it literally means love of nature, biophilia. It's an exciting and growing design practice that illustrates why certain interiors make us feel great and others like my original office, not so much. Outside of work and even now with work, we spend most of our time at home. So the interior design of your home matters because we have an innate intrinsic response to our environments. Good, bio, good biophilic design. Why can't I move to the next slide? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me see what's going on here. I'm screen sharing. Uh oh. Technical difficulties. Casey, is this PowerPoint? There you go. Okay. Uh, okay, but now how do I go back? There we go. Yeah, sorry about that. So um, good biophilic design, it's proven to evoke these responses. Now, a little side note, I come from a family of physicians and attorneys and engineers and teachers, and I went to art school. So I felt a bit of satisfaction sharing scientific proof that what I've been doing all these 30 some odd years really does make a difference. It's not just pretty, and it's not just anecdotally. It's not about the chair. Through the principles of biophilic design, we can create beautiful and meaningful environments. It's about the right chair, the one whose scale and fabric, comfort and placement, all work within the overall three-dimensional painting that is your amazingly designed home. Let's do it again. Alex, do you know why that's happening? Uh, if your PowerPoint then it might be you got to click on your Zoom frame to now be back into your Zoom frame at the very oh. top. When you're clicking outside, it it your mouse is somewhere else, so you got to click back into Zoom. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. 
So sometimes we look at a, at a furniture catalog and we decide that that room looks fine. And that's what our home becomes, a catalog page, though probably not as neat and clean. But it lacks soul and it lacks depth. And most importantly, it lacks a direct physical connection, a personal connection to you, a means by which to connect you to nature. There's some of you who may be thinking, well, you're not so into nature. You like angles and chrome. And that's great. That's exciting and interesting to you. But the comfort, the sense of home comes from a connection to nature. So notice the flowers and the view and the sculpture and even the proportions of the furniture in a well-designed room mimic the proportions found in nature. We resonate with our surroundings. If we're in a chaotic, busy environment, too much stuff, it's, we become a mess. You know, our furniture and colors are out of balance and it hurts our real sense of well being. But when we experience our environment is calm and comforting, it allows us to be calm and comforted. Our minds have room, like space in between musical notes, to think and to be creative. And good design will provide that white space. A well designed home isn't static just like your moods and your states of being aren't static. Colors and textures change in different light, shadows and airflow change as well. Homes that are properly designed to allow you to sense these changes throughout the day positively affect how you feel. Do you see how you might limit your well-being and that of your family by not considering the details of the design of your home? By introducing elements of biophilic design in your interiors, you're applying the science of creating a healthier and happier environment. So how do you do that? There's a thread that winds through a well-designed environment with attention paid to biophilic design. And it's a combination of art, intuition, and science that makes a room feel right. So now imagine a room in your house that you might like to change. And as I briefly explained the three categories of the science, Think about what changes might come to mind. The first category is called nature in the space. The seven patterns of this category reflects how we experience tangible natural elements and living systems. So from the presence of water in a fountain to maybe a collection of natural materials, stones and shells, or even shifting light and shadow, what we see must always convey a sense of time and the presence of life. With deliberate and positive references to nature, what we hear, smell, and feel in variable yet familiar and comfortable ways will have you feeling refreshed and well-balanced. These principles are all found in the natural environment and they all affect how we feel in a space. The next three patterns are found in the second category, natural analogs. These are representations of natural forms in a pattern on upholstery or wallpaper, fish on a wallpaper, shapes of flowers on a rug, or herringbone pattern in the tile in the fireplace. Or using natural materials such as linen or sisal, iron or stone, in unique ways that can represent natural analogs. Material connections give you a sense of place, something that reminds you of where you are. The result is a space that feels warm and authentic. Natural fractal geometries and an awareness of the negative space are appropriate and scaling factors of three feel good. That number comes from, this is sort of an aside, when you're first born and the first thing you see is your mother's face, you see three things. You see the two eyes and the mouth and that proportion and that concept of three by three by three is, uh, uniform throughout classic design and architecture and nature. Rooms with a lower ratio of natural materials, for example, 45% of wood coverage, tends to lead to an increase in diastolic blood pressure and increased pulse rates, which may actually be better for more focused tasks. But increasing the wood ratio to 90%, think, you know, a beautiful teak spa, decreases brain activity and therefore supports restorative calm. Layering these elements provides a space accommodating our changing functional requirements throughout the day. 
The third category is called nature of the space and incorporates five patterns. This category has to do with views and perceived safe spaces and the mystery of anticipating what's around the corner along with other aspects of nature. An unimpeded view, um, ideally greater than about a hundred feet full of interesting elements and forms and textures and colors feels open and alive, but controlled. Think of sheer fabrics as an example of a way to provide depth of view. Refuge can be implemented with a high back cozy chair. And mystery is hearing a water sculpture from outside an unseen garden. When designing an environment with biophilic principles, always first consider the design intent. What age group, culture, and demographic are, will be experiencing the space? And how long will that experience last? To create the most restorative environments, integrating a combination of strategies and patterns will increase the potential for health benefits. Designing rooms that set the stage for a variety of emotions will last longer than designing for a specific feeling. We thrive in diversity. A long, narrow dining room that opens to a large sunroom, shadow play in a hallway leading to a beautiful garden, and interesting and thoughtful artwork and rugs all make us feel wonderful. We are at our best when we can experience the breadth of our humanity by surrounding ourselves with design elements meant to elicit the wide range of emotions we're made of. We can't flourish without beauty. Coherence, fascination, and hominess, our brain responds to these three parameters and addressing them will create for you a home of joy and happiness. Although I've been introduced to the term some time ago, and I, I just recently had dinner with a group of friends, and among them was another interior designer, Rowena Finnegan, who creates healthy homes based on the principles of biobiology, a German discipline that studies the effect of the built environment on human health. And we thought it would be fun to interweave the two principles together. So here's Rowena to tell you more. Take it away, Rowena. Thanks, Stacy. Are you going to move my slides for me? I am. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much um, for the introduction to biophilic design. That was very, very interesting. Um, after I met Stacy, I began to read up about biophilic design to see how the two principles related to each other. And I, I was excited to see that they do, in fact, have many similarities. Our biology tends to be very specific about the many aspects of what constitutes a healthy home. When you are building and designing a home, there are many principles that should be taken into consideration when choosing your materials. So you want to plan your homes individually, taking into consideration the human aspects and the needs of the occupants. Use natural and unadulterated materials. Use wall, floor, and ceiling materials that allow the diffusion of moisture. Materials should be obtained from local resources. Only materials with little or preferably no radioactivity should be used. Metals should be avoided when possible. Use non-toxic glues and finishes. Harmonic measures, proportions, and shapes should be taken into consideration. Use building materials that have neutral or pleasant natural scents and which do not emit toxic vapors. Provide for natural light and use illumination and color in accordance with nature. Other important aspects when using biological guidelines are the elements of nature. Next slide, please. The goal when designing the space is to create a sense of calm. When plenty of natural light and using natural and, unadulter and unadulterated materials, harmonic measures, proportions and shapes are being taken into consideration. Next slide, please. Whenever possible, building materials should be sourced locally. Be sure that lumber is obtained from responsibly managed forests, preferably with the Forest Stewardship Council certification. 
Stone products should be tested to ensure low levels of radioactivity. This is um, particularly important for when you're using granite in the kitchen. Um, some stone can be quite high in radioactivity and it's not good for your health. Materials such as cotton, flax, linen, wool, and silk should be certified organic where appropriate. This means that they've been grown and processed without the use of toxic chemicals and dye stuffs. And in the case of silk, the silkworms are treated humanely. So look for silk with the name pea silk, peace silk. Hygr hygroscopic is a term used for materials that take on excess moisture from the indoor environment and release it back into the atmosphere when the air is too dry. Negative, negative ions equal positive vibes. Think mountains, waterfalls, and beaches. Postman's outside. Once they receive our bloodstream, negative once they reach our bloodstream, negative ions are believed to produce biochemical reactions that increase levels of the mood chemical serotonin, helping to alleviate depression, relieve stress, and boost our daytime energy. The proper amount of moisture in the atmosphere will create positive ions and vice versa. So when you're feeling cranky and agitated, you can be sure that the air is too positively charged. Next slide, please, Stacey. Actually, would you go back one? Sorry. Use wall, floor and ceiling materials that allow the diffusion of moisture. Products created literally from the earth, such as natural plaster walls burnished with beeswax, terracotta and limestone tiles, burnished earthen floors. If you've never been fortunate, fortunate enough to experience the polished earthen floor, you're in for a treat. These are used um, as serious floors. You know, we're not living in, uh, in some strange earthy place. You can, you can actually finish your shores there your floors like that. Um, it's soft and nurturing underfoot, like walking on leather. Clay and limestone bricks. Yes, you can gather local clay and build your own bricks, same as you can go and gather standing dead trees and use your own lumber. Um, local stone floors for wall and walls, entryways and fireplaces. Next slide, please. With adequate cross ventilation, in many cases, there's no need for air conditioning. Make sure you have plenty of operating windows and open them regularly to air out the home and yourself. If you're chilly, wear more clothes. The brain works so much better in a cooler temperature. Color. Exposure to at least six hours a day of sunlight is essential to our well-being and building adequate stores of vitamin D in the body. Light stimulates our met metabolism and prompts our bodies to produce mood enhancing endorphins. Light also increases prog productivity. Too much direct sunlight though can produce glare which leads to irritability, especially um, when you're trying to work. So make sure you use window shaving, shadings for a filtering effect. Use color that reflects nature. And remember, that doesn't mean beige, beige, and beige. Look at the colors of the flowers, birds, trees, the sunset, the ocean, vibrant and delicate colors abound. So to paint, most regular store-bought paint contains volatile organic compounds. VOCs are the organic solvents used in standard paint for formula, sorry, standard paint formulations, which serve as the carrier for paint pigment. Commonly included in conventional paint are benzene, formaldehyde, cadmium, lead, and chromium. VOCs are emitted by a wide array of products, numbering in the thousands. Um, and the health effects of all these are eyes, nose, and throat irritation, asthma, headaches, loss of coordination, nausea, damage to liver, kidney, and central nervous system. Some organics can cause cancer in animals. Some are subject, subjected or known subjects, suspected or known to cause cancer in humans. So healthy paints. 
Um, you can use traditional milk paints. VOC free commercial products include AFM Safe, Safe Coat, Ecos, BioShield, and American Pride. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, although we love companies like Benjamin Moore and they do make a paint called VOC free, it's actually not VOC free. It's not free enough for, for my customers. I don't feel comfortable. Um, textiles. Just know that the majority of the general store bought textiles are not healthy. That includes clothes, bed linens, everything. It's sad to say that if fabrics are not certified organic, they will most likely have had toxic chemicals used in the processing and they will very often have a toxic stain resistant finish. There are certainly some beautiful hand printed textiles available that are not certified organic, but they do tend to be very expensive. Just find a trusted source and they'll be able to help you. Recycled polyesters and nylons may be good for the planet. They come up with stunning patterns and colors. Um, but the thing is, they're not healthy for human use. Yes, they do, they do help to divert um, products from the landfills, but firstly, they're made from petrochemicals. In addition, once again, they're processed with toxic chemicals and are laden with colors containing heavy metals such as cadmium and lead. Uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, so for, a green, for green and healthy living, choose fabrics like organic cotton, hemp, organically grown linen, humane silk, organic and pure grow wool, and um, vintage fabrics as well. Leather, this is another tricky subject. Many people come to us saying they want a leather couch because they have dogs and kids, so they need something tough. Unfortunately, the something tough conventional leather is treated with the use of aniline dye. Aniline dye refers to a clear dye that penetrates the leather, giving it color without the use of pigment. Aniline is prepared commercially by the reduction of nitrobenzene, a product of coal tar, or by heating chlorobenzene with ammonia in the presence of a copper catalyst. Animal studies indicate that aniline causes tumors of the spleen, amongst all sorts of other things. Occupational exposure to benzene is associated with an increased risk of cancer. However, all is not lost. Not only is there such a thing as eco-friendly leather, the leather we offer at Pine Street Natural Interiors comes from farms in Germany where the animals are treated with the utmost care. They graze on open pastures and they live a happy life until their ultimate de demise. Unfortunately, most, um, most of these animals are raised for consumption, which is a tricky subject for many of us. So eco-friendly leather is chrome-free, dyed with vegetable dyes, prepared with natural oils, completely biodegradable, more expensive than conventional leather, leather however, and it is also completely unprotected. So we found a non-toxic product also from Germany that can be sprayed on the leather to provide a protective coating. It's totally non-toxic and it doesn't change the color or the look of the leather at all. And it really works. Uh, carpets and rugs. Once again, as with other textiles, we have the same problems with most conventional, conventional carpets and rugs. Um, you can, you can um, find some good companies that are trusted and you know that you, you trust their products. But even um, I went online recently because I couldn't find a rug I wanted and I was thrilled with what I found. It was a lovely patterned rug. And when it arrived, um, I took it out of the package and I couldn't breathe. It was just terrible. It was really, really bad. Um, and it was covered, in, well, I'll be getting to that in a minute. I'll tell you why it was really bad. But um, I was lucky enough that somehow or other it hadn't sunk in too much and I had the carpet washed by a professional. And um, it's lovely now, it's, it's working. So just be aware of that. Um, just because a carpet is pure wool does not mean it's healthy either. Stain resistant finishes um, on the carpet and then backings 
often contain toxic chemicals with serious health problems. Other natural fibers available for floor coverings are hemp, jute, wire, seagrass, nettle, cactus, paper, and linen. But again, be sure about the finishes, dyes, and the backing. Um, so the questions to ask when you're buying rugs and carpets are, are there any toxic dyes or finishes? Have they been stored in mothballs? Mothballs don't only smell awful, they are really bad for the health. Have they been fumigated? Um, when, often when products come from overseas, they're fumigated when they enter the country and fumigation is also toxic. And another one that I feel very strongly about is, are they socially responsible? There's um, um, a network of nonprofit organizations dedicated to ending the illegal child labor in the rug making industry. And this is called Goodweave International, formerly known as Rugmark. So when you are shopping for rugs, it's not absolutely essential. There are many other companies that use the same tenets, but, um, and, but haven't, don't have the Goodweave rug mark. But this, you, by, by buying something with this mark, you can be sure um, that you are getting something where child labor is not incorporated. So ask for rugs that have been obtained, uh, that have obtained this seal of approval. So there we are. Stacy and I hope you found this presentation entertaining and informative. And um, if you have any questions, go ahead. Well, thank you very much, Rowena. That was very good and a very excellent presentation.